Bulls who are both desperate to feature in next month's showpiece final face off today at Golden Acre. Heriot's Rugby are currently fifth in the table, four points behind today's opponents following their impressive win last weekend against second place Watsonians. A bonus point win this afternoon could see them overtake the Bulls and move into third place if their opponents pick up nothing from their visit to Edinburgh. Ayrshire Bulls recorded a barnstorming 48-17 win against Stirling County last time out and have won three and lost three so far in the competition, but they have been suffering from travel sickness, having not yet won on the road. Today they're going to have to if they want to challenge for a place in that final. So both sides need a victory this afternoon here on Free Sports to keep up the pressure on the teams above them. Coming up live from Golden Acre, Heriot's Rugby versus Ayrshire Bulls kick-off at half past one. Yes, a very warm welcome and it's good to have you with us. I'm delighted to introduce to you Edinburgh and Scotland back row forward Jamie Ritchie. Jamie, good to have you here. Well, thank you very much for having me. So how is the preparation going for Edinburgh this season? Because you kick off next weekend against Scarlets, don't you? Yeah, it's been good. I mean, a bit of change to start the season. Uh, a few of us coming in late off the back of uh, the non-existent summer tour. But uh, no, it's been really good. A uh, bit of change in the guard in terms of coaching, so a few new, few new bits of training and uh, some new faces as well. So it's been great for us. You were supposed to be the captain of the summer tour, and of course yeah. none of the games really happened. That, how frustrating was that for you? Uh, yeah, pretty frustrating. Look, um, it was a shame that we couldn't get at least one game played, but um, a few lessons learned in terms of how I want to do some stuff if I get the opportunity again in the future. And I'm still undefeated, so I'll take that. <laughs> yes, undefeated captain, and of course Mike Blair was the captain, uh, the, the coach. Of of Scotland for those uh, for those uh, non games, but he's now obviously the coach for Edinburgh as well. How's that working out there? Yeah, brilliant. I mean, um, a lot of the guys knew Mike coming from Scotland, and obviously there's a couple of the older lads played with him when he was at Edinburgh. So um, it's good. Mike's a great guy. Look, um, he's very approachable, and um, yeah, the boys are loving having him as our head coach. So quite different from Richard uh, Cockrell then. Uh, in his own way, I mean, Cockers had the way of doing things, and look, he brought some success to the club. Like. I think last season was the only thing, the only year where we weren't in some sort of playoff. So um, I think it was just the right time for Cockers to go and uh, Mike to come in with the new stadium and everything. It was brilliant. And of course, against uh, Scarlets next weekend, it's going to be live in Premier Sports. We're all hugely excited about that. Yeah, we're really excited to get going. Um, after yesterday, um, we'll start prep. Uh, prepping for Scarlets um, we've got a few things to look at before the week but um, a hugely exciting game yesterday for us and uh, a lot to take forward into next week OK, let's talk about this afternoon here And have you watched much of the, uh, the Falls Rock Super 6 because it has been a pretty sort of uh, dynamic competition yeah, no, I've watched a little bit. Um, uh, one thing that stands out was uh, Chambers' kick last week. Obviously, Chambers in with us quite a lot at Edinburgh, so it got put on the group after after he did that. So uh, the boys were absolutely loving it. So he's been in with us this week and uh, hasn't shut up about it. So, no, it's been good. Absolutely. And Ayrshire Bulls seem to be getting things right at the right time as well. You know, they had a great win against Stirling County last weekend. They come here having not yet won on the road so far, though. Uh, looking for some blood, though. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, it's a tough place to come here at Golden Acre. I, as I got a soft spot in my heart, I played here for Heritage a long time ago now. Um, but yeah, look, they'll be looking to get a win on the road. There's there's good players on each team that I've played with a few of them, so it'll be an exciting game. I'm looking forward to to watching it. The first match between the two, I think maybe uh, Ayrshire Bulls dominated up front as well, and the Heriots um, fans <laughs> will not be happy about that. No, I don't think so. Um, but Heriots are known for their their wide, wide, expressive rugby. So hopefully we see some of that at Golden Acre if the rain stays away. And have you been impressed with the standard of the the Super Six? Because obviously it's supposed to be the step up to the you know the pre, uh, you know the professional game. Uh, and young guys are coming through and performing pretty well. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's great that they have this platform now, the kind of semi-professional, and to kind of bridge that gap between the club game and the professional game. And, and you see the results, the proof's in the pudding. I mean, there's a lot of guys who have made that step between Super 6 and, and the pro game, and they've performed well when they've had their opportunities. So, yeah, it's been really good, I think. Who's going to win this afternoon? Uh, my heart says Harriet, so I'll go with that. Hart says Heriots. Well, let's see if it happens. It's half past one, the kickoff. Let's hear the coaches ahead of this match. So, uh, looking forward to this one this afternoon against a side that are, that are looking good, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're at home, we're confident, but um, they've had a few great wins, so it's going to be a tough match. In the last game, would it be fair to say that Ayrshire dominated you up front? Yeah, absolutely. We lost the contact area hands down, so that's a huge focus for us this week.
And let's talk about you know the way that it's been going for Heriots this season because obviously I spoke to you in week two and and you were really trying out the uh, the squad. I mean you've had a chance to see what's going on here and uh, you must be pleased with the way things are going. We are, we are, but we need a, a level of consistency from the players. Uh, we put in performances and not being able to back them up. So it's a real test for the guys and the squad uh, today just to see if we can get performance. So talk us through some of the changes today. Um, we have been forced into a change at scrum half. So Alex Ball has come uh, into the starting position. Jed Gelderbloom comes onto the bench. Alex Ball scored a couple of tries for us this season, so um, I, I think he'll go well. Now, obviously, these guys hadn't played any rugby before the, the Super Six for, for quite some time as well. But I, I've been quite surprised by the standard and, and you know and how, and how many games have gone to the last minute as well. It's been really dramatic. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, credit to the players. Um, coming from a 16, 18-month layoff, um, it's, they had a few rusty games to start with, but they're, they're really starting to perform now. And obviously, you'll know that Ayrshire haven't won on the road so far today, and you'll be hoping that that record continues. Yeah, we'll hope that stays the same. Um, but it, like I said huge battle up front for us today we're looking forward to it thank you all the best so it would appear that you guys are the form team at the moment you know the boys have put a couple of good performances together um, but off the back of that it's how not to let complacency slip in that's the, the key message to my players it's about continually to push at trainings and at games to perform at that level well you must have been impressed and happy with the performance against Stirling County last weekend yeah, with, without doubt, a tough team and then two home games, two good results and two high scoring results as well. But I, I flip that round and look at the scores against us and that's where we're, we're, we're doing really well at the moment. Our defence has been outstanding. And I guess the last time you played against Heriot's rugby, you really won that contact battle as well. Yeah, but, well, that's where we base. Uh, myself as a coach, that's where I pride myself on and that's where the boys, we put huge amounts of effort in that area. And we understand teams will now look at that and come at us in that area. So it's about continually to push ourselves to make sure we win that battle. So let's talk about the, the form. 1-3, lost 3. Yes. Not one in the road just yet, though. Travel sickness is here. <laughs> What's gonna, what are you going to have to do to turn that around today? You, you've mentioned it. The contact battle. Uh, looking after that ball. When you're away from home, if you give the ball up easily, then it allows the home team to get confidence, get a crowd behind it. So for us, it's looking after that ball, keeping a hold of the ball for a long phase of play, putting them under pressure. And if we can do that, I believe we'll be in a good place. And also, you, you must be impressed with the way that your whole squad have performed as well, because mm -hmm. I mean, every coach has had to kind of pretty much use every player they've mm -hmm. got. Yeah, without doubt. And that was always a worry, isn't it, when you've got a couple of young boys in there? Uh, how much game time can they actually get? Yes, they're in a really good coaching environment pushing, but. This is, they need to play rugby and we've been able to give the majority of our players a good amount of game time so I think that's really come to the forefront when we can pick numerous different players in different positions and still get a good good team. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, the, and the step up from the Premiership to the Super 6 has, yeah. been, has been really marked, hasn't it? It's been a big step up. Yeah, without doubt. Now we, we, by the fact that we can train three times a week and consistently play against good competition, good, 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 good uh, teams against you, it does drive our standards. And it puts more pressure on me as a coach and my coaching staff to, to give the goods to the players and then puts more pressure on them to really go out and take the games on. You also know that a win here today could put you very close to that final. Yeah, well, no, not even close to the final. It puts us in a good position. So uh, that, the key message for us is this, we cannot afford to be complacent. We've got to go out there do what we do as a team, we don't change who we are as a team here, we, we will try and be physical and we'll try and play some rugby, so that's who we are. We'll look forward to it. Thank you. It's always good to hear the thoughts of the coaches ahead of this one. Kicks off at 1.30 this afternoon here on Free Sports. We're going to take a short break now and after that we'll see highlights with the other matches from the weekend.
Welcome back. Heriot's Rugby against Ayrshire Bulls is almost upon us. But before that, let's look back at the other action this weekend, starting with the clash of the top two titans, Southern Knights and Watsonians Rugby. It's Friday night. It's Foss Rock Super 6 Championship from the Green Yards. Live tabletopping clash for you tonight between Southern Knights and Watsonians. Well taken by Ian Moody. Was bound to come back to Fraser Rennick. Managed it. Oh, Ian there, and he's going to give the score. Is in, and I think it's Fraser Rennick did get it down. Yeah, he did yeah. get it down there. Yeah, get it down. It was uh, all very predictable from the point he got it at the back mm. because he had a, a fair head of steam once he got going. Much even. I suspect much tighter than we even thought it might be. Mm. But with, uh, in terms of territory and possession, the Southern Knights having the upper hand, the score doesn't really reflect what they've got out of the game so far, although there could be more here. They're within five metres. Desperate tackling by the Watsonians defenders. Murdo McAndrew calling for it. And he's given the try. Yeah. The touch judge, the yeah, assistant referee, was standing on the line and the referee looked to him. Job done. But yeah. again, it's it's that drive. And when they're within five metres, they look like they're going to score, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they absolutely do. Yeah, they're hard to stop from that distance. I have to say the forwards carried well there from that pre-planned move in the line out. Our second try scorer, I think. And they've a kick to nothing. Oh. And it's gone through the hands, I suspect. Although That's the referee's back. given yeah, it, I think he's, it went back off the winger. he's giving it. He's given the try. He has given it, having, having consulted the assistant referee on the far side. Watsonians have broken through with seconds left of the first half. They've managed to get in the referee just explaining. We can have a look. He, the referee says the ball came back. Oh, tail ball. Lots of movement in the Southern Knights tail there and remember of course they've got a man extra anyway here they go oh. Fraser Rennix on a roll here looking That's for his third try oh, they're all the like way he's letting like them go train. and they've gone all the way Huge. it's a penalty try actually it's a penalty try underneath yeah. the post the and referee the I card. think I think there's a yellow card coming as well needs reinforcements Bad good timing there with him, that. They're all over him. They managed to recycle it. Gee, that's, that's terrific scramble defence, isn't really it? Really good. Yeah, really good. And the referee, in fact, has called it. The referee has called no side. And that, according to Ben Blaine, is it. The elusive fourth try has disappeared way into the borders gloom as far as Southern Knights are concerned they've certainly secured the victory quite handsomely by 25 points to 8 A bright afternoon at Bridgehawk for the visit of Borough Muir. This is a battle between the league's bottom two sides, so both looking to improve their standings in the table. These two served up a 70-point encounter when they last played on this ground, and a similar result would see them leapfrog Heriots in the table, albeit for at least 24 hours. Obscured by a pillar supporting the main stand. One by George Arnott again. And some forward momentum. The ball should work its way back towards Rainer Kennedy. There's a pile of bodies just dropping down together. And Stirling County are in for the opening score. Almost exactly ten minutes of the first half gone. He now scrambles in and he's got options towards that left-hand side. On towards Pittman. Pittman with a little crossfield chip kick near. Jordan Edmonds grabs it in the air beautifully. And he's over for the score. He was able to... Outmaneuver Stephen Hamilton there, and it was the Pittman crossfield kick gathered beautifully in the air. Again, the forwards just coming in. Cortwang is wrapped up in a tackle there, but suddenly that a release here, and Russell now up and over that 10 metre line. One two option bringing Gowdy into play. They've extras here, Stirling County, they're going to be over for the score. And Stirling bringing Tom Roach off his wing. Roach, who scored when the sides last met. 
and Megatland is in underneath the post for an excellent try a well worked move involving the Stirling midfield he cycled again, Stirling County have it once more Cunningham out there towards the full back Robertson, they've got queuing up on this right hand side it could well be the outside centre Russell who's in for the score it's Russell back towards Robertson and Robertson finds Stephen Hamilton Stirling hands there were so cute and accurate and Stirling find the try line, they score again. Bioretto reaches in, has a little look at what options he has out towards that left-hand side. Taken on there by Pittman again, trying to bring Edmonds in off the wing, trying to wrestle his way towards the ground once more. The referee raises the arm. And again, the sheer strength there of Jordan Edmonds, you can see how much that means. G'd up as he gets back to his feet there, taking the congratulations of his teammates to give Muir. A three-point lead with seven minutes to go. Pittman's penalty, is it drifting wide? Oh, it comes off the bar, bounces and over! What drama at Bridgehaw! It looked as if it might be drifting just wide of the uprights. He put just enough on the ball and how often do we see that? Stirling County throw in, Angus Fraser. Again, worked well and brought Jackson into play in the line. Fraser, remember they don't have Rainer Kennedy but they do have Fraser in there the crowd trying to push and heave them across that try line for a dramatic finish Stirling, Burry Muir defending for the lines of snow but Stirling are down, they've grounded the ball what brilliantly from a hooker's point of view Angus Fraser right at the very heart of that drive and attack and Stirling at the death have a try which will surely secure the victory to add the icing on the cake then there's a successful conversion the referee blows for full time and Stirling County engineer a famous victory 27 points to 23 Stirling County then gaining some revenge after losing last month 23 points to 17 but this will be a bitter pill for the Burrymuir players to swallow but it's still in County 27, Burnham Year 23, and not for the first time this season in the Fors Rock Super 6 competition. A game has gone right down to the wire. Yeah, a dramatic win for Stirling County there against Boroughmuir Bears. Now, uh, Southern Knights are top of the table, but three rounds left of the competition. Guaranteed there's going to be lots of twists and turns. Heriot's Rugby against Ayrshire Bulls is coming up right after this break.
A very warm welcome back to Golden Acre. Time now to get you over to our comedy team for today's live action. Jamie Ritchie is alongside Jimmy Lyle for this one. <coughs> Thanks very much, Stuggy, and good afternoon from one of the great old amphitheatres of Scottish rugby. Golden Acre has played host to some special days in the history of this game. And this afternoon, vengeance is on the minds of the Heriots players after the Ayrshire Bulls dismantled them at Milbury just a few weeks ago. This one played out in the shadow of Castle Rock in dreek and blustery conditions here in the capital. And the Fosrock Super 6 is reaching its boiling point and round 7 simmers to a conclusion here on Free Sports in the Scottish capital. Well, this is how round seven has shaped up so far. League leading Southern Knights putting Watsonians rugby to the sword by 25 points to eight on Friday night. Stirling County edging the Boroughmuir Bears yesterday. And of course, round seven drawing to a close here in the Scottish capital at Golden Acre as Heriot Rugby host the Ayrshire Bulls. This is the league table with one fixture remaining in this round. Southern Knights with a commanding six-point lead at the summit of the standings. Watsonians tucked in there very nicely in second. But Ayrshire Bulls can overtake them with any sort of victory here. It would be their first away win of the season. Heriots really need a win to keep up their hunt for the final on the weekend of the 16th of October. These are the teams then, the Heriot side entrusted by Andrew Kelly to scalp the Bulls today shows just a couple of changes from the 15 that beat Watsonians in round six. Alex Ball scored a lovely solo try against Stirling County. He comes in for the injured Lloyd Fielden and hulking former Glasgow number eight Jason Hill replacing Callum Marshall, who's on the bench today. Pat MacArthur too plumping for continuity and after the hammering dished out to County last weekend, why ever not? The Bulls too make a change at scrum half as Harry War swaps places with Jordan Lanak. Hulking tight head prop Calvin Henderson has been in fine form this season but has to settle for a place on the bench behind Michael Scott. Ayrshire's game breakers though lurk in the back row. Watch out for Yari Fantini and Blair McPherson, the Super 6 top try scorers. Yeah, lots of power on that Bulls bench as well. The hulking figure of Ruri Sais, all 125 kilos of him, and age grade prop Michael Jones in the mix for Heriot's to Jake Gelderbloom, formerly of Leicester Tigers, could add some panache at scrum half. Well, only three weeks have passed since these franchises last locked horns in the Falls Rock Sugar Six, and it was the Ayrshire Bulls. He delivered such a dominant display at Milbray. 41 points to seven. They thumped Heriot's on that afternoon. And there is Yari Fantini with the man bun. Such a game-breaking signing. Former England Sevens International. And the Bulls arrive here in confident mood. Back-to-back -back victories, 40 points scored in each of them. That is the task that faces Heriots this afternoon as they look for some much needed consistency in this competition. And they're led out into the capital drizzle as the weather begins to turn for the worse here at Golden Acre. Ian Wilson geeing up his troops. A yellow card in an otherwise commanding performance last weekend. Good. Roscoe. And here is our match Good referee, man. David Sutherland, Graham. former Dundee High fly half, who has the whistle DC for this afternoon's you know. contest. We'll get, on, just wait for the whistle, yeah, okay? No Side, you're going to go. Yeah, just you keep behind as well, ball yeah. behind the line. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. You can bring it either side if you want. Ian, where? Time on, boys. Well, the stage is set for the last contest of round seven in the Super Six. Finals weekend almost within touching distance. Time. It's a and immediately an issue. early penalty Two. for Heriot's rugby. Timing issue. Two black in the air. AR10. Yeah, just a sloppy start there from. The Ayrshire Bulls, Jamie, taking the man in the air and an early chance for Heriots to build some line. pressure here. 
potentially some overexcitement, I think. Um, but yeah, I mean, an opportunity to strike here for Hertz. They'll be looking to get into the game early. Hopefully, um, a solid set piece and uh, send their front runners up and um, and try and get some attack going. But uh, no, it's a shame that the weather's turned. I was hoping to see some flowing rugby, but maybe we'll still see some. Um, I think at this point the weather probably suits air, uh, in my opinion. But I'd love to see um, some rugby still being played. Cammy Fenton's first throw is a good one. It's Jason Hill and Houston the inside ball to McMichael. Just through here. the hands and perhaps the rain making its presence it's felt inside Here's the opening nine. couple of minutes. Bruce Houston's down in the backfield after advantage that little charge. Over. And Harriet's will come with 14 men. Moss Jones stabbing it through but putting too much on it. Squirts out on the fool. Take it, yeah. And that's a good net yardage gain for the Bulls. Okay. Time is off. White, Herrick, you'll be on the line when we three start, okay? Your tens. Yeah, look there at Robert Kay, who's been in really impressive form throughout the Fosrock Super 6. 74 tackles okay. across the six games in which he's played, averaging roughly 12 per match. Strong shoulders on, the line, on him. You'll have a chance to match as always. Same to as his midfield buddy Bruce Houston, but thankfully he is okay to continue. Clean line out for the Ayrshire Bulls. Stay. Opportunity for the Don't visitors to one. flex their you're attacking tight. muscle. Now you're out. Scored more points and more tries than anybody else in this competition. That's one snide. First chance for the backs to give it some air. It's Tom Williams, the Welshman with the carry. War and Everard running hard off his shoulder. Harry War with a little snipe. A little bit of space. The door closed on him quickly though. And now Michael Scott round the fringes. Harry War. Younger brother Gus plays for Sale Sharks in the Gallagher Premiership south of the border. His father too is a man. former Sale player. Man. And that's great work First at the breakdown from Harriet's. Jason Hill was First in there. Man. Now can they spin it? Can they use this overlap? Stuart Edwards puts boot to ball 50, and chases the Bulls backwards. Davidson comes across. And prevents that one knocking out for a 50-22. Back foot two, thank you, two. War. Alex McGuire, the Bulls hooker. Tackle his first little work. rumble of the Lord. afternoon. Use please, nine. Alex War will use the telescopic legs of Everard to create the space for the box kick. Houston comes forward. Take from the Island Age grade standoff. Ball. Inside from Leishman. Slightly awkward, but it worked out for Andrew Nimmo. Ball is available. Ball misses out Wilson. Ross Jones stepping forward at first receiver. And that is a confident Still kick wide. from the Welsh fullback. Yeah, I think a, a good first D set for um, for Harriet's there. I think it was Jack McLean with the turnover, but um, they're looking really good when they're getting that first tackler below the ball. I think they're putting a lot of pressure on the breakdown. There's a couple of times where they may have gone a bit high and uh, Ayr's physicality has come into play a bit, so um, I'd like to see Harriet's going a bit bo more below the ball um, in terms of their defence, but a good start, I think. Um, some tentative kicking maybe to do with the weather, but uh, a really good start to the game. Here we are, Andrew Kelly. Perhaps smarting from... Five. Beating his team took it in a few weeks ago. He's keen for Harriet's to really scrap and be aggressive and compete at the breakdown. Dual set piece functions cleanly. And that's a powerful carry from the away pack. Just to work the space. Maguire, Thornton and Everard in behind. Yes! And War, unsurprisingly, goes to the skies, asks Callum Young to come forwards. He was very, very far back in the starting position. And the Bulls will take that. It's been marked. Okay. 
white line, please. I can't see us seeing too much um, play inside their own half from either team at the moment, uh, especially with the weather being how it is. Uh, as you can see, Air looking to try and find their way to a 15 to try and get that contestable box kick up. It's worked out quite well for them. Um, a getting a tackle close time. to the touchline, looking to drag people into touch. So a really good exit from air there um, and see if they can capitalise on it now with field position. Is it a tough game to play in this if you're a forward, Jamie? There's a lot of, a lot of heavy breathing out there already. Uh, yeah, I mean, sack, legal sack. sometimes it's quite nice to see the rain because it's not too hot, but um, it's in games like this, it's really important that you know your role. So their air will have worked on their exit strategy and you can see that they're getting the right position, the right bodies in the right position in terms of who's carrying when to get the kick set up. So um, really good to see. A bit more tactical play. Mudworth just scragged into the ruck and it's released for the Bulls. And now Tom Jordan, the New Zealander, fly half. Spent some time with Glasgow Warriors last season, as did this man, George Thornton. War. Williams. It's that big right hand free. Edwards eventually deals with him. Handling at the back from Scott and Bloodworth and the forwards in unison to George Thornton. That's a mobile prop. Stacking this left hand side. And instead, Jordan's going to probe the corner. Nicely done from Callum Young. Lovely footballing skill. Stay white, stay Ross white. Jones, who has a trusty right boot, finds a very, very good touch. Herrett's coming with a lot of line speed. Um, white, white. I think that's putting the Ayrshire attack under pressure, especially with the wet weather. They're, they're maybe not looking to go out as back out the back as much, so that line speed's gonna gonna bring a lot of physicality into the game. Um, so the 10, a good please, tactic lads. from Herrett's. They're attacking the breakdown really hard, um, and that line speed and low chops um, line, yes. a good tactic for that. So yeah, Ross Jones, such an experienced customer, 29 years old, has stepped up to lead the Heriot side when Ian Wilson's not been available. Fantini, first carry for him and immediately there's the razzle dazzle, there's the offload to Caven, who's side open the Heriot's midfield, brilliant feet from Elias Caven. They recycle it well, Jordan ups the tuck and run. There's a massive spree of black jerseys if they move it right. And they've got a penalty up their sleeve as well. Nine because Cammy Fenton was offside. That was Ryan Sweeney with the charge. War. Well, kick from Davidson. Where's this one going? Touchdown by nine. There was no Just advantage. Just by Alex Two Ball. Point offside. And we will come back for the penalty. But that, Jamie, was a glimpse of the brilliant dynamism offside. of Yari Fantini here. Yeah, Oops. brilliant. Just gets the ball off the shoulder of the nine and um, frees up the hands. And a, a great support line there from... Um, from the winger, um, he does really well, nearly beats the fullback. But what Herrits do really well here is they slow down the next breakdown. Um, I know they give away the penalty, but sometimes it's better to give away three, not seven. So I think they did really well, well to um, slow that breakdown there. But uh, a great first set piece of t strike from from Air. So uh, I look to see Fabatini on the ball again. Yeah, Fantini, been, sorry. <laughs> we'll let you away, Jimmy. Through she goes from Tom Jordan. So the deadlock broken. Here's your Bulls with a slender lead. And Jordan nudging his tally for the season to 36 points. And that was all about the brilliant footwork, the, the acceleration and handling of Yari Fantini, who splintered that Heriot's defence so ably. Side you going. I'm the same. Houston sticks that straight up and straight back down again. Callum Young just beaten to it in the air. It's a very assured take under pressure. Jordan sends it high. Now on tight. Jones. Eyes up 50 20. Trying to just dink it in behind. Looking for the 50 22. Point happening for him. On side. You lost forcing teams to leave another player or two in the backfield in situations like this. As Houston goes to the skies and drops it on Davidson. Good take from the fullback. And that's fumbled by Ross Jones. He'll claim it went backwards. But everybody else inside Golden Acre knows that was a knock on. 
We've seen quite a lot of contestable here. kicks coming in. Um, a few of them just going a wee bit too long, but I'd like to see a few more of those kicks coming in. I think that one was from Matt Davidson there. Just probing, testing the backfield and uh, looking for that 50-22, as we mentioned. Um, for Edinburgh yesterday, we had a couple of them in the game and they, they, there's huge swings of momentum if you can get them. So it's a great new rule I think they brought in and um, I'd like to see a few more of those kicks coming in. Well, we've got a little break in play, Jamie. Has the, the reception among you guys in the pro ranks been pretty positive to what World Rugby are trying to do with these laws? Yeah, I think so. They they come Mr. in every so often with the, with new rules that try and change the game. Some are good, some are, are not good. It's just about um, trying to make them work best for you. I think this 50-22 one is um, is probably a good one in terms of trying to look for a bit more attacking kicks rather than just people trying to trying to go for contestables all the time. And um, it's a, it's, a, it's a, a massive bit of skill to get those kicks right. So I think um, the more you see that, the better. Okay. It's never entirely straightforward to tell what's going on inside a scrummage, particularly from the far side, Jamie, but it does look like the Ayrshire Bulls have got the upper hand up front in these early exchanges. Well, I think when they played earlier in the season, um, that was one of the areas where, where Herrick struggled up against them and Ayr probably took a, a bit more of an advantage. Speaking to um, Scott Riddell before the game, he was saying that they felt that if they could sure up the scrum and the set piece that that would be... That would be an area for them to, to kind of bring into the game that they felt like if they could get that and kind of get some parity there that um, they'd have an opportunity. So I'm sure Air will be looking to take advantage of the of the upper hand that they gained in the last game. For me, for me, both sides, both sides are too far away. We're going to get instability. Okay, you two take the space you need, but let's have closer. The Lanarkshire Brogue of referee David Sutherland's just telling the front rows exactly what's expected of them. It's certainly a wonderful attacking platform for the Ayrshire Bulls. Bind! Set! Keep it on, Gussie! Keep it on, It's a solid platform. And they go down the blind side, the kick through from Jordan. Houston covers it well. Tackle release black. Use. Come, come. Cammy Fenton with a burrowing charge just to give his halfbacks a better angle. It's not the best of passes from Ball. And Ross Jones, under massive pressure, does just enough. Oh, Air have come out all right there. I would have liked to have seen them use that um, field position a bit better. I think when you get scrums in that position a little bit off the touchline, you automatically get an overlap somewhere because Harris will have to leave a defender on the on the blind side of the scrum and then Air can bring their full back up, whereas Harris will leave a full back in the backfield to cover any kicks. So I'd like to see them maybe use the hands a wee bit more there because um, they already would have had an overlap. It's a lovely slick line out from the Bulls. And Williams out the back to Caven, who's come searing off his wing. Caven puts the foot down. Can he get there? Just force the offload. It's still alive. And Robin Ayrn slides in at the corner. He'll just have to check if the ball from Caven went forward. But the officials are happy it did not. And the giant figure of Robin Ayrn blasts over at the corner for the game's first try. Great try, lovely bit of deception in the midfield, pulled out the test. back and the just a combination of, of yeah. pace and an overlap for um, yeah. for the winger there coming through. Unlucky not to get a clean offload off the deck, would have been made it look a wee bit better, but um, a great first try for the Ayrshire Bulls. Third try of the season for Robbie Nairn, third in seven matches. And is one of the more simple ones he'll score, supported well and flopped over. Is this just sheer pace from Caven, Jamie, or is there something that, that Robert Kay could have done to defend that a wee bit better? I think he's probably had to sit down on the short line. It's uh, a really good execution of a line-out play. I'm sure uh, Coach Pete Horn's got that one in the locker. Um, so, yeah, he'll sat down on the short line, and that combination of pace, and they'll felt st stress on the outside, so they'll slid off on the dummy pass. Um, keeping the ball in two hands there is probably what's made the difference, because he's showed and gone and gone through the middle. Yeah, Tom Jordan's kick falling short and falling wide. So it remains 
8-0 to the Ayrshire Bulls. But it is a very commanding start for the men from Millbrae with 15 minutes on the clock. Find a kicker, lads, it's good. And it's with it all to do. Jordan just bashes that back from whence it came. That's a tremendous kick. He was inside his 22 as well. Brilliant nudge. And the former Waikato age grade pivot. To the 10, please, lads. How important will the kicking game be, given the conditions, Jamie? If you can get your team 60 metres forward like that. Yeah, hugely important, obviously, with the weather being high as you expect. Handling errors, so the further up the pitch you, you can be, the more opportunities you'll gain from that. So um, applying pressure to a team when they're in their own half and they're under pressure with their skills and they're likely to kick it back to you and potentially give you position, a better position to attack from. So the kicking game is going to be hugely important today. Lovely take from Ian Wilson at the tail. No, we'll and Jason it. Hill loses it in contact. He was advantage lining up the big shoulder. Scrum advantage. It spilled forwards. So we'd have got a freebie. And Matt Davidson no makes hay. War to Scott, who's the pivot player, Vantage and over. Everard, good line from the big second row, and then he loses it. Okay, the advantage was over. And the ball, then five's knocked on player very off the greasy down there. On. Scrum, white feet. And error follows error. A lovely bit of play and transition from there off the turnover from air. I think um, because they got the yep, turnover yep, in midfield, yep. they expect the space to be out wide. So. Advantage nice play out the back from the forwards ball. using the backs. <laughs> um, again, when I was speaking to Scott it's Riddell pre-game, it's something they identified the air doing a bit more of playing out the back. So um, it's nice to see that coming into play and um, that what Harris have previewed is is also being good. Like a massive part of the professional game now is is previewing teams before you play them. So um, he seems to have got that one right. But um, a lovely bit of play from air, and they're unlucky not to make make some more inroads. Bind. Yeah, it's easy Set. to see why they are the top point scorers, even having played a game fewer than four of the other teams in the competition heading into today. Here's Ball, and now Edwards. And he cultured left boot in the veteran centre. And the mark is called by Davidson. Mark called. Back, keep going. Here's the mark, keep going. Keep going on your red boots here. Wigger's fine, thank you. Not a bad touch from Matt Davidson, given the angle he was playing with there. Scotland under-20 cap and financial analyst. Measured that one neatly. Here it is with a chance to, to build some pressure for the first time this afternoon, Jimmy. Yeah, I think so. It's a good position um, for them, so hopefully they get their, their set-piece right and we'll see what they've got in the locker. No contest from the Bulls, so a clean take by Jack McLean. Hill. I'm surprised to see his considerable bulk used as the battering phalanx. And now Leishman in the hand free, but it was forced. It wasn't necessary. And Air can punish them here from broken field. Caven. Like a jack in the box looking for the opening. War. Jordan through the hands of Davidson, but yeah, there's no advantage, always under pressure. They did have Not the scrum up their point. sleeve. Always going backwards. How frustrating will that be for Heritz? It's a couple of times they've had good set piece yep. positions to be able yep. to turn the screw a little bit and they haven't been able to keep hold yeah. of the ball keep past the phase. White, yeah, scrum, frustrating. I think they're ball. probably just trying to force the issue a bit. They're maybe feeling a little bit under pressure with the scoreboard. But I think they just need to keep ball. They've looked good when they've when they've had phases where they've had two or three phases strung together. I think um, just being a bit more patient in the, that area. You think when they're in, when they're in the opposition's half, the opposition are the ones that are under pressure. So for them, the longer they can hold the ball down in the opposition's half, the better for them. So I think it's maybe not chucking the the 50-50s, maybe cut it down to maybe 80-20. Um, but we want to see some good rugby. So. Um, I'm not saying completely lock it down, but uh, don't force the issue too much. Bind. Pragmatism. Set. Keep it on. Ready. Keep it on now. Yeah. Oh, no. 
Yes. At the moment, this Ayrshire Bulls defence, the best defence in the league, has been pretty unflustered. Yes, and once more, Harry Wall is just going to create a protective wall of forwards and ask Callum Young to claim it, which he does. Dangerous broken field runner Callum Young. At the top of the charts for line breaks in the Super 6, but well shackled on that occasion. Hill. Took some stopping, but stopped he was. Use please, nine. On your feet, let's get fucking moving. Apologies if you picked up any foul language over the referee's mic during this live rugby match. And McPherson. The top try scorer in the Super 6, Davidson looking for the kick pass and it's beautifully worked to Robert Beattie, he's got serious gas, McMichael just makes the tackle, that was vital, but Ayrshire Bulls have speared their way deep into Heriot's territory, Robbie Nairn gets another touch, Everard running short and hard, so too is Ryan Sweeney, squat blindside flanker, Thornton, at a standing start, cut down by Cami Fenton. Two former pro players. Sweeney again, thundering round the corner. Now they can shift it. Jordan, delay on the pass to Davidson, and that was a high shot from Ruri Leishman. And David Sutherland immediately reaches for the yellow cards. And it's the third in two matches for Heriot's rugby. And Ruri Leishman will spend the next 10 minutes on the naughty step. Time is off. I just That's to a tough one. Okay. It's a really good bit of play from Air there, just coming okay. on the inside ball. Um, I think he's maybe slight, he's probably slightly shorter, but falling into the tackle maybe. And because he's trying to scramble, he's probably in a little bit less control of his body, Ruri Leishman there. So unlucky, but again, I think they might take the points. So no try. 3 not 7. Probably not the best penalty to give away though, where a yellow card. Yeah, here's another look at the incident. It was the the inside ball to Davidson. Yeah. Yeah, it's not much argument there, I think straight yellow has always been pretty high. He is a bit shorter than him though, to be fair. Is that your defence when it happens to you? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Ref, he's a scrum half. Jordan, one from two so far. And absolutely no problem in making it two from three. And the Ayrshire Bulls lead grows by three more points. I think the difference for me so far has been any time Ayr have looked like any sniff of an opportunity, they've taken it. Whereas Heriots have, um, have probably applied a bit more pressure to themselves than maybe necessary. Um, I'd like to see them gain a bit more territory and maybe just ease down on the ball a wee bit. Try and maybe plug away. Change it. Plug away. But credit to Ayr, they've been outstanding so far and um, taken all their opportunities. Tell you, left to run that way. Yeah, no complaints by Ruri Leishman. Caught his punishments, and that is where he will be languishing for the next 10 minutes. Heriot's 11 points down, a man down, and the Bulls again. Just running at soft shoulders, winning a penalty. Hands in that ruck. Hand on the ground, not supporting his weight. Two, not supporting his weight. That's a tough one for Cami Fenton there. I think Harris are putting themselves under pressure from the kickoffs. Their kicks are kind of in between, not quite deep enough to force a kick back, but not quite short enough that they're contestable. And um, if you're not making that first up tackle on off kickoffs, you, you're automatically under pressure. You've got a few guys in the backfield. Yeah. You wanted to stretch as much width as you can. Um, and Cammy's me, got caught in the scramble there, just two, trying to slow the me, ball down. Because you ground, get caught in the hop off a kickoff is a very hard thing ball. to defend, where you should be applying pressure. But seven there, thank you. But you're not. So I'd like to see how it's either kick it a little bit deeper, or maybe maybe put them into a bit more contestable space. Yeah, at the moment, Ayrshire Bulls are punishing nearly every mistake that Heriots are committing. Here's War Everard, uh, relentlessly willing carrier so far. Now Jordan just delays the pass to Fantini who clings on really well and he tried to slip it out the back door. It was just cut out. Back on the far side. And the Bulls have pinched it back. It was Fantini again locking in the breakdown. And this is a glorious opportunity 
for another away try. Ward has to excavate the ball from that breakdown. Jordan. Here's Davidson. Robbie Nairn with a crack at the corner. It's David against Goliath. And Goliath wins at a canter. Not a chance for Alex Ball to stop the titanic winner from gobbling up his second of the afternoon in the same corner. And Ayrshire Bulls have a firm, firm grip on this game now. Okay, thank you. It's the speed of ball for me that I think is applying so much pressure to Harris. Air done really well at getting to their breakdown sharp um, and just putting so much pressure on Harris through the, the speed of their ball. Um, great use of the hands on the edge and you give um, Robbie that much space on the edge, you, you struggle to, fin to stop him. So a great finish and another good try for Air. Are you surprised Robin Aaron's not got a pro contract this year, Jimmy? Yeah. Let go by Glasgow in the summer. It's such a tough position. I mean, yeah. back three on and on both the club sides is is a pretty is an area of strength, and uh, I'm sure Robbie, after the 18 months we've all had, is just happy to getting re to be getting regular rugby. Uh, I said no reason if he continues his form that that he might get something in the future, but um, he'll just be chuffed to getting be getting some regular rugby and scoring two tries in a game. Yeah, apparently he can't actually wear the, the number 11 jersey because he's so big 6'4", 110 kilos I would guess so he's wearing the replacement back row jersey he's been Tom that Jordan. size since I played a beautiful under 18s slot. with him um, <laughs> yeah, yeah Rob has always been a, Tom Jordan, an absolute yeah. so he's, a, he's always been rapid and massive so to a combination that is desirable to many <laughs> me included yeah here he is again Good timing of the pass from Davidson and Alex Ball hasn't really much of a hope of, of stopping him from there. Tom Jordan, by the way, nailed the touchline conversion from down on this near side. So 18 points to nil the score. And it is mounting rapidly against Heriots. And how dearly they love something to show for their toil. There's Jack McLean. Such a good soldier in that Heriot's back row, makes so many tackles involved in so many breakdowns. Fenton, formerly of Edinburgh and Glasgow Warriors. Ball, Houston, he's thrown it straight to Caven, and Caven could punish Heriot's here. Shackled importantly by Houston, who atoned for the error. Dug out by Sweeney, Jordan. Williams, it's three on two here. Williams takes up a lot of the space and then. Just throws it behind Robbie Nairn. But again, Jamie, a glimpse of how dangerous the Bulls can be on transition. Yeah, right now. Yeah. Yeah, there was a, was a. I think they heard us. Um, it was a contestable kickoff, and they won it back, and they and they looked good again. It was just maybe something a little bit forced that's then put air back in the ascendancy. But they have been super sharp on transition today, and they were unlucky. Robbie looked like he could have been in for a third there if uh, the pass had been out in front. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be hunting that for the, the remainder of this game. His captain Blair McPherson got a treble against Heriots at Millbrae just three weeks ago. And that 41-7 obliteration. Benton, it's gone overhill. And Hasty can't gather it back. So again, the Bulls with a scrum advantage up their sleeve. Everard, another powerful carry from him. Nine advantage is over. Jordan to McPherson. Spinning through the tackle of Edwards. Williams got it outside K. Jordan striding through the gap. And Matt Davidson. Barging into the 22 they go. War. Bloodworth. And inside ball to Alex Maguire, the hooker. McPherson, lovely angle from Thornton. Could be penalised for crawling, referee allows it to go. Everard this time lined up by McLean. Fabulous tackle from the flanker. War. Scott. That's Michael Scott. Josh Scott playing for Heriots. And Michael Scott is penalised. And that's a big penalty for Heriots. Great turnover from Cami Fenton. Just a second too late from the, the Ayrshire support and he's in over the ball. It's something that he's he's very good at, has been for a long time and uh, great to see a lovely bit of defence. Love a jackal. <laughs> there seems to be a skill that's increasingly prized across the board, but especially in hookers. 
I don't know if it's because a lot of them were converted back row forwards, but even if you look at the likes of George Turner and Grant Stewart and some of the guys involved with Scotland, there are so many who are so potent over ball now. Yeah, it kind of lends themselves to a lot of their physiques as well. <laughs> Quite squat and heavy. Um, but Cammy being a converted loose head has probably trimmed down slightly since he's been moved. Um, but again, something that he's always been very good at. And once these guys get in, in those low body positions, it's so hard to move them. It's all about speed and um, the best way to kind of win a breakdown nowadays is, is to get there before anyone else. Because um, really most people, if they get in on our set, it's, they're hard to shift. And you come. Thank you. Yeah, you need a fleet of JCB diggers to excavate Cami Fenton from the jackal now. position. How's his throw? It's a little bit long, but it's been gathered back on the Harriet side. Sloppy at the base of that breakdown, and George Thornton gleefully making a menace of himself, but pulls off their feet. Both hands are on the ground. Not supporting his weight, number one. Halfway, please, lads. If you're Andrew Kelly just now, Jimmy, what are the, the messages you're sending down to your Heriots players? Um, I think just calm down a little bit. Do you know, they they seem to be putting more pressure on themselves than that she's being applied to them. Obviously, Air have looked really good when they've been in attack, but most of their opportunities have come off transition from, from Herrick's mistakes. So I think, um, sure, up the line out, Air haven't really competed too much in the air, so it doesn't need to be double tops. Um, and just keep the ball, hold the ball, um, try and build some phase pressure, try and stress the defence of, of Air and um, see what kind of inroads you can make. But again, with credit to Air, they've applied a lot of pressure at the breakdown, they've slowed up Herrick's ball really well. And um, every opportunity they've had on transition, they've taken. So um, it's been a good game so far. Very, it's restored to their full complements. Rudy Leishman back from the Sinbin. And his first job is to soar into the Edinburgh sky and retrieve the ball. Poor old Cammy Fenton's having his jersey ripped off his back. His ball breaks, and there is McMichael on that clever short line. The ball can't quite collect the return ball. Rory McMichael loves that line off a set piece. Can't make the passes stick. Ball inside. Use nine. War is charged down by Leishman. And he's under all sorts of pressure from Ian Wilson, but he was taken high. It's a big man against a small man. And Ian Wilson just riding up on that tackle. Thanks, Again, it's just easy outs uh, for Air here. On probably didn't need to chuck that pass. Was it really on with them tracking back? Could he have taken it to the round or tried to even score it himself and build phases? You're applying pressure if you're in the 22. And um, any time I'd say you want to, if you're in the 22, you want to be coming away with something. You want to be coming away with points. And, and chucking the ball away isn't necessarily ideal in that situation. Um, and again, it's, it's discipline of Harry. It's like letting air off the hook. They're applying pressure. They're still down. They still had to exit from the 22 metre line. Um, but an easy penalty kind of gives them the ball. Ryan Sweeney is the target for Maguire in the line outs. And here goes the hooker. Very mobile specimen. He's tearing into Jason Hill. Sweeney to Tom Everard. It's better from Henry, it's better line speed, better strength in the collision. Jordan. And a land one on Ross Jones. And well, since he's had hands on ball, he's getting Robbie Nairn as well. And it's a good kick chase from the Ayrshire Bulls. Hasty. Yellow card and otherwise. Impressive performance last weekend in the win over Watsonians. Ball sends it high. Robin Ayrn with time. Trying to get away from McMichael. Gets the hands free to Everard. Backwards off a of Harriet's hand with Fantini lurking in close attention. 
Okay, it's an unplayable white for him possession. White feet. Okay, seven was initially legal. He's then been cleared onto the side by this seven. Unplayable white ball. I guess another glimpse of what Robbie Nairn's all about there, Jamie. Powering okay. through a tackle and getting the offload away again. Yeah, lovely bit of play and lovely bit of skill out the back door. Good to see. That's what we asked for, isn't it? And the, the golden acre drizzle, some razzle dazzle, some running rugby. Yeah, definitely. Absolute field of dreams for stuff like that. So. Um, yeah. You're reliving your uh, your teenage years playing down here. <laughs> yes. Well, often the razzle dazzle wasn't coming from me. So. <laughs> but it was your hard work that set the platform for it. Maybe. Set. Ready. Let's go! Probably not. Both instability. Okay. Find up. Feet closer. Okay. Get that. I get that stability so we can have a contest. Him binding up. His feet closer. That's what I'm needing. Let's go, boys. Come on. Yeah, lots of sorting out for David Sutherland to orchestrate at this scrummage. Nimmo Fenton and Josh Scott against Thornton Maguire and Michael Scott. That's a better platform for Heriots. Ball, Houston, Edwards. Again, they want to utilise his left boots. Bobbles one just into touch by the 22. Great kick there from Stuart Edwards. Um, puts air in a position where they likely have to exit and gives an opportunity for them to, to counter attack. So, a really good strategy from inside their own half. Yeah, he's a canny operator, as Stuart Edwards. There's a the centre partner, Robert Kay. Good contrast of styles, those two. Yeah, Edo's been around for a long time at Heritage. I remember playing with him. Had a bit more hair back then, though. <laughs> but I'm hearing this uh, this season's been called as Indian Summer, so hopefully we see a bit more of that later in the game. Yeah, he scored a fantastic try last weekend. Running one in from 30, 40 metres. With a horrendous celebration? I can't possibly comment. No, I used to do horrendous <laughs> celebrations back in the day. Squint throw in at that line out from Alex Maguire. So, this is an enticing opportunity for Heriots. They have the scrum right on the 22. They actually looked like they had a bit more of the upper hand in the last scrum as well, Heriots. They got a decent hit on, so might be an opportunity for them to get maybe a right shoulder up and, um, and have a chance to attack at them. Like I say, because it's off the touch line, the, they should get an overlap. Um, so we'll see what they've got in the locker in terms of any fancy set plays. Well, it's the Bulls who get the nudge on this time, but it is clean ball for Heriots. How they need a try before the half-time whistle sounds. Less than two minutes to back one. Jason Hill stripped in the tackle by Davidson. And it will be a Bulls putting at the scrum. But in fact, there's some skullduggery from Yari Fantini. And David Sutherland's awarded the penalty to Heriot. Yeah, it's just unsportsmanlike conduct from Yari Fantini, I think, tapping the head of Jason Hill after he knocked the ball on. Didn't see it. Yeah, unfortunately for Yari Fantini, the official spotted it. Harsh to give the reversal for that. <laughs> Not in the spirit of rugby union, I think, would be the, the definition of that one. But huge opportunity here for Harriet. Um, see if they can get their line out going. Maybe a potential looks like a drive coming with um, Jack McLean at plus one there. Well, this is the closest Heriots have come to a try all afternoon. Well secured by Ian Wilson. To the tail they go, the peel is on. And they begin to summon their bruisers. 
but they've lost the ball in contact and Ayrshire Bulls could go the distance here Beatty's got pace he slams it downfield and he slammed it too far out on the full and that is the last act of an entertaining first half and that is the first half in microcosm Perriott's pushing unable to make their field position count they cough up the ball and Ayrshire Bulls nearly punished them at the other end. It's been a frustrating first 40 minutes for the home side. But two Robin Ayrn tries, very well taken by the giant winger, are the difference at the interval. Some words of consternation for Cami Fenton and David Sutherland. But at Golden Acre, the half-time score is Heriot's rugby nil. Ayrshire Bulls 18. Hold on, just let me check. Well, uh, wait, 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 wait a minute, we don't have the... Adrian, wait, we don't have the, we don't have the monitor. Okay. Monitor's on its way. Great, sounded great in the first half. I say it's hard. So, like, often, yeah, and in the past, no, it's great, sounds great. Beautiful. So here's what we've got. Can you see that, Jamie? So that's first try. Yeah. Great work from. Uh, is it Elias Cabin? Number 14. Robin Neal going over in the corner. Second angle of that. I'll be slightly slower, obviously. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, what we've got next? Yellow card. Second try, okay. <laughs> yellow card, yellow card, yellow card. Uh, second try, again Robin in the corner, beauf. I'm going to talk about uh, Fantini as well, because okay. he's looking pretty good. And this is what's this? This is, um, should have been more maybe? It'll appear on screen and we'll just chat through it.
Welcome back. Uh, Ayrshire Bulls haven't won on the road so far in this competition. They've won three, they've lost three. They're halfway there to their first away victory on the road against Heriot's. A dominant first half performance from the Ayrshire Bulls. And uh, Jamie Ritchie, I mean, my goodness, Heriot's will be f uh, going, what happened there? Yeah, I think it's just been a case of uh, one team taking their opportunities and the other not quite. Um, Air every time they it seems to be every time they've been in the Harriet's 22, they've come away with points or come away with something, whether that be a yellow card or a try or a penalty. And Harriet's have been in the half of Air a couple of times, but just have maybe coughed the ball up with a silly mistake or or put themselves under a bit too much pressure and given away a penalty or something like that. So. I think that's something they'll be looking to shore up in the second half, and uh, Air will be looking to continue their their form. Yeah, let's let's look at some of the kind of the, the, the dominant Air play then, and, and you know, as you say, when chances are, are created, they're very good at you know scoring them. Certainly, this stage of the season, maybe perhaps not at the first couple of weeks, but look at this, this is a very well taken try, great break, great hands. The ball at that point was wet, and this is this is a great score. Robin Air in the corner, no one's going to stop him. Yeah, exactly, especially from that far out. And it was, it's just a good execution of roles from a set piece. They'll have worked through this a hundred times this week. And um, I think it was Robert Kay at 13 who sat down on the short line. Great run from there. And then it's just the ball in two hands, squaring up defenders. Unlucky not to score it himself, but um, they did well to keep the ball alive. And, and you're not stopping Robbie Nairn from there. Robbie Nairn, I mean, he's got number 19 in the back of his jersey. He's number 11. The number 11 jersey is too wee for him because he's a big <laughs> lad, a big unit, as they say. But there was a yellow card as well, some indiscipline as well from Heriots, which didn't really help their, their cause at all. Yeah, I said in comms that the speed of Ayr's ball was applying loads of pressure to Heriots. And I think it's just the case there where we're scrambling to try and shoot up the inside and he's just got caught a bit high so on the shorter man. Considered a penalty there and it was uh, scored by uh, Tom Jordan but this is the second try again, Robbie Nairn in the corner and at this stage, easy street for air at that point. Yeah, it's just good skill execution they're holding their depth, the ball's a wee bit wet they're giving themselves a bit more time on the ball and it's stuff that they do every week, they do skills all the time, I'm sure Pete Horn's got them doing skills lots and lots so it's just good execution and that's what they do it for And I guess as well, they've got some players in there Fantini as well, is a really exciting player when he gets the ball in hand and he and he's also does a lot of the bad work and the dirty work in the breakdown as well but um, you know there, there was a chance that you know Harriet maybe could have scored here but they're, they're coughing up their chances aren't they? Yeah like I said they just seem to be making some silly errors or making some poor decisions and I think I'd like to see them in the second half when they get down in, in airs 22 that they are um, holding on to the ball a bit more like applying that pressure to them that Air have been doing so well to the, to Harriet. I guess the big concern is that if you're 18 nil up at half time and you're getting a bit cocky then you think oh hang on a second and I'm sure that they'll be talking in the Harriet stretch room at half time that because they are going to be a bit too kind of look, just looking at these pictures here you know tapping in the head there that's going to drive you bananas isn't it? Yeah well it's maybe a bit fuel for the fire I think and um Look, what have Herod's got to lose in this second half? They're 18 0 down. They've got to come and throw everything at it. And uh, Air are the ones that are now under pressure. They've got to hold on to their lead for their first away win of the season. Exactly. And Herod's, as you know, as a side, they, I mean, they don't like to lose at home. So, I mean, do you think they've got it in them to turn this round? I think if any team does, Herod's do. But um, from on the form that Air have shown today, it'll, it'll be a tough ask. But um, it makes for a great spectacle. It certainly does. But why do you think Air have been so dominant? Because they clearly dominated the game down in Air when they when they played down there. Um, like I said, their speed of ball when they've had the ball has been has been brilliant, and they've um, applied a lot of pressure to Heretz through that, um, and they've taken their opportunities. This game's about it's, it's, it's small margins, and the team that takes more opportunities is going to be the, usually going to be the one that wins. There is no doubt about it. The second half is going to be a huge one, a mountain to climb for Heretz Rugby. 18 points to nil. They're down at half time. The second half is coming right up after this break.
Welcome back, Edinburgh Castle, an ancient fortification, but here at Heriot's Rugby, the defence has been anything but grand. Zero points in the first half for the home side, Ayrshire Bulls rampant and dominant. The second half is coming up right now with Jimmy Ritchie and Jimmy Lyle. Thanks very much, Doogie. As you say, it has been a commanding first half performance from the Ayrshire Bulls, and as things stand, they will leapfrog Watsonians and get up to second place in the Fosrock Super 6 table. Heriots, well, if they don't get things moving in the second half, if they don't pull this one from the fire and their bids to finish in the top two and get into the championship final, will be flickering by a very faint flame indeed. This is how things stand on this final fixture of round seven in the Fosrock Super 6. The Southern Knights with a very, very strong lead at the top of the table, but Ayrshire Bulls at the moment are moving on to 21 points. And of course, they could make it 22 if they win and get another couple of tries to add to Robbie Nairn's first half double. And Heriot's at the moment not adding a single point to their tally of 13, and they would stay in fifth place with just three rounds remaining. Here come the teams. Player McPherson stalks out with his band of bulls behind him. Everyone looking rather bedraggled after that first half, but the weather is clearing. Blue skies are appearing over central Edinburgh. But at the moment, the shadows are lengthening for Heriots. And they will need all of the guile and gristle of that man, Jack McLean, their fetcher in chief with the scrum cap on, to try and snatch a victory and the jaws of defeat are warming up. Ian Wilson's men already, with it yeah. all to do. Where? Ian, all good. Hold. Got it, lads. OK. Time on. Here we go, then. 40 minutes for Heriots, potentially salvage their season. 40 minutes for Ayrshire Bulls to strengthen their position in the top two. And immediately Josh Scott sent rumbling backwards, but Heriots, well, they had retained possession and then Jack McLean spilled it and Fantini comes bursting away. Such an injection of speed and industry when Fantini touches the ball. Thornton flops the ground in contact. Over. Bloodworth, there's that pivot play. It's another touch for Fantini. Really six, thank you. What? Jordan. 50-20. Pulled the corner again. Yep. And that is a Bounce fantastic outside. kick. It's just gone Almost into touch. Outside, outside the 22, so... Eriots will get the line out. Yeah, that is about as close as you'll come to a 50-22. Yes, um, he did well, Tom Jordan, there to identify. I think the backfield just got a bit stuck in the middle of the pitch, and he and he saw the space and very nearly got the ball back on the 50-22. Yeah, he was in training with Glasgow Warriors last White. season. Tom Jordan, New Zealand-born fly half, Lads, still just 22. White, He's had a very strong season well. in the Thank Super you. 6, oh. including a majestic Thank touchline you. conversion this afternoon. Pressure on the throw from Fenton, oh. but he hits Whoa. Leishman. Heriots will try and extricate themselves in an awkward position. Don't change. Sideways nine. I've looked a better angle. Jason Hill. He's asked to do a lot of the running into heavy traffic. He's not made a great deal of yards. Hold point, hold point. Houston sends it long. Nairn. Maybe chasing that hat trick in the second half. The Bulls have got an overlap here. Caven doesn't want to use it. He goes himself. Back to his pace and his trickery. Side entry. And yeah, there was a. A big clear out coming in from the sides from Blair McPherson. Great bit of work from Jack McLean there at the breakdown. Um, 
they looked under a bit of pressure there, Heritz again. Um, the work rate back off the kick from the outside backs was outstanding, which gave the space for um, Caven to go through and maybe could have used it. But um, another great bit of work at the breakdown by Jack McLean. Yeah, Houston nudges play into the Ayrshire Bulls 22 for the yeah, first time in the new half. Good I'm getting good at that, yeah, not bad. You feel hurry, it's on your front line, lads. Oh, you to start making the most of these attacking opportunities that they are carving out for themselves. Yeah, I'd like to see them string a few phases down here together. That would be good. Hold the ball, apply some pressure. Josh Scott, the Fraser Bravo. That's it, they're good. Lurking at the tail of the line outs. Oh, it's been pilfered and Leishman like spills it forward. And Harry War is happy just to there was take no the scrum. It's come forward from four white in the line out. Scrum, air ball. And that ball is a coach killer for Andrew 15. Kelly. Yeah, it looked like Air applying a bit oh, more pressure in the area. Maybe it's a tactic coming into the ball. second half. They let them go the a wee bit in the, uh, in so the first, but not much deception in the line out there from Harriet, and it's a tough, like tough, tough throw same. against under pressure. Let's go. Get the stability. I'll allow you a contest, okay? I'll let you in. Three Lishman showing a first half yellow card. Did score a vital try against Stirling County a few weeks ago as Harriet's registered the first win of the season. Didn't do much with that bubbling line out ball. Behind the ball, behind the ball. Good platform for War. Jordan lashes it down the tram lines. Jones to McMichael. And what can he do? Open those long legs of his. Introduces Robert Kay into proceedings. Houston, Edwards, Ian Wilson beats Jordan. Held up by player McPherson, captain on captain. Hill tried to take route one, but it was very rapidly closed. And the pool's almost pinching it back. Fenton wins between the two second rows, Bloodworth and Everard. Ball, Houston, Robert Kay. Long last, some attacking ball, some phases for Harriets. And their exciting backline to use. Jack McLean. The line speed is so good from Ayrshire Bulls. Houston again tries to rev the engine. Tries to get things going through Josh Scott. Penalty advantage. And George Penalty Thornton's advantage. trapped One himself in there. And Harriets <laughs> will take the penalty. No advantage. Go ahead, up. Good set of phases from Harris there, and they, they get the reward of the penalty. Um, they had a probably they probably had a couple opportunities out the back, just that extra pass from a forward. If if it maybe pulled out to, pulled it out the back to the connected um, back, they might have made some inroads. Um, just the next step, perhaps the next step. But it's easy standing up here to say that. But uh, hopefully they can they can identify that space and get the messages down there. Well, that is a fine kick from Bruce Houston. The young Irishman sends it right to within five metres of the Ayrshire line. Now fill the forwards with confidence. Kicks like that just fuel you, fuel you with confidence, and um, it's, it's great to be to be jogging forward to those ones, especially when you've got looking about five, six metres out, and you practice these ones all the time. So potentially another drive we see here. Jack McLean is lurking beside the front pod. Goes to Hasty. It's a clean catch this time. And they've spun it round. Ayrshire Bulls infiltrated really well, and Hill has got to commando crawl his way out of trouble. Hasty protects. Slips the pass away to Ruri Leishman. He's barreling backwards. Scrappy at the base, but it's scrappy because of an Ayrshire hand. The angle. Side entry. Will David Sullivan be thinking about cards quite yet, Jamie? 
Time's off. Say that again. All Will right. they be thinking about yeah, a yellow card the referee? Yeah, 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 potentially. So I mean, they've, they've been down here a couple right. of times, so we restart. We can't play with maybe a, just a warning for now. They've not had too much, too many penalties down here, but again, good to see string some phase right, together brings off, pressure. And I'd like to see Harris maybe come with a little bit more tempo at line out time. Time's off, yeah. For me, it feels like they're kind of hanging about a wee bit, maybe allowing air to get but set. Um, so if they, they can come with a wee bit more tempo with, into no, no, all aspects of the game, I think that that would. Yeah, bode well for them. Time is off, you can come on. Yeah, we need to sort out this player. Yeah, the Ayrshire Bulls are being forced into a change as well, just as we go through the replays here, it was Fraser Hasty lurking at the, the base, found Leishman, and then amongst that collision, Alex Maguire, who made the tackle for Ayrshire Bulls, I think okay, gets yeah, shoulder to the head please. from his teammate. You can see him holding his head at the bottom oh, right of your picture. It's Fantini on, right? with the clear out. Bit of friendly yeah, fire, and Alex Maguire yeah, good to go. troops off, must have some kind of head wound. So Jamie Drummond. Let's go, please. Water off. Oddly enough, wearing number 25 <laughs> for the Ayrshire Bulls. Who comes on at hooker? <laughs> to the corner we go again. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It is a blood sub, we understand, for Alex Maguire, so we could yet see him again if he gets sufficiently patched up, but as things stand, Drummond is on. There he is, wearing 25 in your picture. Oh, the line out is clean for Harriets. Can they make Eight. all their toil Eight. tell? And their labour bear some fruit here? They're driving so, so close. It's a fantastic shunt from the Bulls to hold them out, but... There's been some transgression in there. Eight. Changing his mind. And Blair McPherson, the guilty party, swimming around that mall. Yeah. A better ball set up there from Harry. It's a bit more length to it. Much harder to defend if you get a, a long mall. Um, when it's short, it's easy for the defence to kind of climb up the side and make it a bit more difficult. But I think uh, Blair McPherson has been done for coming up the side and changing his bind. So um, another opportunity to apply some more pressure. McPherson, like all good forwards, pleading his innocence, but David Sutherland having none of it. And for the third time in a row, Bruce Houston dabs one into touch. Tatsu looks like he's made him kick it backwards. Yeah. <laughs> Just goes to show every inch counts down. Pressure on the throw of Fenton. Hasty takes. Maul! The Bulls set up the counter shunt, but that is a much, and much more promising looking maul from once. Harriet's. Stop once. Stop once. McLean is in command at the tail. Driving the way in field. The Bulls have successfully stopped them all, so they're going to have to shift it. Callum Young off his wing, runs over the top of Harry War. Young, so, so close. You feel Harriet's have to make this field position count. They have to get the ball over that line. Leishman is held up. It's Ian Wilson, the captain. He locks and loads, and McLean, again, fantastic close quarter defence from the Ayrshire Bulls, and they might have cocooned the ball here, they have indeed, and that is a monstrous turnover for the visitors, huge boost. Huge bit of defence there from Ayr, um, Harris just getting caught, maybe trying to give a pass too close to the line for me, um, I think they would have been better just picking and going there. Um, but massive, massive bit of defence there from Air. They'll be delighted with that and a huge confidence boost. A huge, huge confidence boost. Massive swings and momentums like that can, can change games. So credit to Air there. Great bit of defence. Time off, Lace. Yeah, fantastic defensive set from the Ayrshire Bulls. Only 112 points they've conceded in the six games up to this one. But at the moment, Time on. the defensive line, their try line is intact. 
Yeah, I touched on it earlier. I'd, I think they're getting caught a bit, slowing themselves down a wee bit too much to go to the line. I mean, they had a good break off the mall, and if they'd gone with a bit more tempo, it's less time for the defence to set, it's less time for them to get, get themselves right and allow themselves to get back on top. Once you've got quick ball, it's very hard for teams to to, re to get back on back in the ascendancy in terms of defence. Like you need a big play, you need a, a good bit of jackling, or you need a massive tackle to kind of break that cycle. And I'd just like Harris to, to maybe just try and go with a bit more tempo when they're down here. Scotland prop Murray McCallum among the interested spectators here. Golden Acre, formerly of Edinburgh, okay. and Heriot's now with Indeed. Glasgow Warriors goals, along the so M8. Okay. Looks to be enjoying his afternoon. Mazza absolutely loves Can't Heriot. Have a <laughs> to the balls in, <laughs> okay. Well, they could do with him on the pitch at the moment. They line up this scrum. Andrew Kelly's yet to go to his bench. Let's have the experienced Michael Linus on there who could come on at Hooker. Crouch. Mikey Jones as well, a member of the Force Rock Academy and a, a recent under-20 cap. Dig moments these. Bull scrum, solid as a rock. And Jordan, the time to pick his spot. It's not gone too far, but it is a clean exit from the Ayrshire Bulls. Line, please, gents. All right. If you were Harriet's here, Jamie, what would you be looking to do? Would you would you call a strike play? Would you try and use your forwards again? Um, I, sure they are, thank I don't know. You. I, I don't know what they've been doing during the week, but something maybe like a stop play, something that you know you execute really well. Um, get them back into the game. Get them back creating phases and um, apply some pressure. Yeah, Jack McLean's gone into the midfield, but again, the first Advantage and most three. integral part of the whole operation is securing the line-out ball. Heriots haven't done that. Advantage and the Bulls over. will run it out through BT and Davidson and Robbie Nairn, who's on a hat-trick. To be caught high by Ovi McMichael, but more stooping into the collision. War, quick ball, slick ball. Everard met hard by Rudy Leishman. See a chance if they shift it right. They've gone the other way. Tom Williams, the former Osprey centre, but there's a bit of obstruction. In fact, there's a forward pass as Davidson came bursting into the line from fullback. Unlucky, I reckon the air fans will argue flat at best. Flat at best. Time off. Um, See again, again, one five and eight. Air just look a lot more crisper on the ball. Their passes Air are out in front. They're coming onto the ball at one, pace. Five and eight. It's something that Heritz have been lacking. A lot of their passes maybe being a little bit one, too high or they're catching them at standing start. And that's been the difference for me, I think. Um, just yeah, execution, as well. execution of skill, execution of game plan right. has been much, much better from Air so far in this game. And Air and as well. have, to their credit, have been a, a better start to the second half, but again, they, they've not come away with any points. And that is... Uh, the crux of it all, isn't it? You Happy want to score DC. more points than the other team, so... Okay. Um, yeah, I Time think back on. that's something Forward that, that from Harris will probably look to improve white ball. going up to the rest of the game. Right. Yeah, Excellent. both head coaches Excellent. going Excellent. to the bench Excellent. and sending for reinforcements now. Change at scrum half for Ayrshire Bulls with Glasgow okay. Warrior Jordan oh. Lanark replacing Harry War. And George oh. Thornton, a former Warrior, coming off. Yep. To be replaced right. by oh, Calvin yeah, Henderson, yeah. formerly of Mar. He's a big old brute up front. A few changes up front to make you aware of in Heriot's ranks as well. Andrew Nimmo, Jack McLean, and Jason Hill off. It looks like Mikey Jones, Ronan Sedak, and Callum Marshall have come on. Oh, and Heriot's have gone quickly from the penalty. Ball away. That's more like the tempo that. The home side have been right. trying to bring to proceedings. No, no, clearly back foot. Dug out by Hasty. See that goes in no, there. Still in. Ball, Houston, Edwards. Kay was lined up by Williams and by Jordan. Good rocking from Heriots to secure the ball. Ian Wilson. 
Find some gas. Ball is never on ball. Down the blind side they go. Houston inside ball to McMichael. And once more it's One, gone through the hands. Two. Not for the first time. It's come forward through the mine into another player. All right, four. Uh, tight heads feet behind them. Need them closer. One thing I've noticed um, is maybe a bit of a difference between the two teams right. is um, as long as you're close their stuff at the breakdown. Away. Air, when they're when they're carrying, are, are clearing past the ball, uh, so it's on a plate for their nine. Um, whereas Hertz are getting a bit stuck over into the top of the ball, and often um, the nine Alex balls having to go in and dig for it. Um, I think again, it's just execution. It's probably something they speak about quite a lot, and um, something that Air is certainly doing better in this game. Crouch, bind. So Calvin Henderson's first job will be to anchor the scrummage for the Ayrshire Bulls. He's got them club international, and he's a big old brute. Lenat, first touch for him. Jordan, BT, Davidson looking to release Cavan. Young tracks him across. Three Harriet's players make the tackle. BT, the burrowing run. And he was held, so he's going to be penalised. Didn't release the ball. Listen, listen. Yeah, listen. I'll explain, okay? It's unfortunate. Your knees were on the ground. I've called tackle release. You then have to release the ball, okay? It's timing, but it's unfortunate. Okay, but you go. Is that a tough one, Jamie? Yeah, so, I definitely think so. I was about to say to the Harris guy's still got a hold of him, so technically, if it is a tackle, he has, he has to, to let go as well. Okay. Um, it's a hard one for the ref as well because he has got up while he's been held. So um, it could have gone either way. Uh, it's probably a bit of a rugby incident, but um, by the letter of the law, if he has been tackled, the, both tacklers have to release him. So I would uh, say Air have been a little bit hard done by there. Just, yeah, just the knee on the ground yeah, from Bobby Beatty because David Sutherland had said he was held yeah, good. I think he felt he couldn't then go back and reverse his decision another change for Harriets this time in the back line with Rory McMichael being withdrawn and James Cooper former Glasgow Hawks man entering the fray Excited to see James play. Actually, I played Scotland under 16s with him. Uh, so, a bit of a blast from the past. And they could certainly use some attacking impetus. And James Cooper has got pace to burn and agility in spades. And once more, the set piece misfires for Heriots. And Mr. Bulls have done a bit of a number on that Heriots line out today. Lenac relieves the pressure. Callum Young. Oh, there's two elder brothers in playing for Scotland sevens last year. Ball to Houston. Edwards in the pocket. Oh, it's just kept in by Lenac. Unorthodox, but it's worked. And then, speaking of unorthodox, Davison lashes one, one into the, the near stand. Yes. Off the shin. A slicey nine iron. Great field position, uh, a great kick from Stuart Edwards, just finds grass right on the touchline, it's a tough one for Air to deal with and then because they've had time on the kick chase they're allowed to apply pressure to Matt Davidson who's just sclaffed the kick, a wee bit a technical term. I was going to say great use of sclaffed Jimmy. Watch replacement, Watch replacement, I think you're swapping back off. So Alex Maguire has been sufficiently patched up and he is back on at hooker. And that okay, blood replacement is reversed. Off goes Time Jamie on. Drummond Point wearing 25. Yeah, the Bulls make another change to young Aaron Tate. He's on for Elias Caven, who's been a very, very dangerous presence on that right wing. And love for a uni graduate, Aaron Tate. Bloodworth gets up there well. And once more, it's a hideous line out that's gone to pot. Ryan Sweeney, a real tiger to try and stop. Lanak, playing the speed. You could see what McPherson was trying to do there. Wilson lined him up. He got the ball away. If you did, I've missed that. And Young Tate was away. 
I've seen it as a former. Um, I've seen it as a former. Go back to the line out there. I think it's quite often that the hookers will get the blame for it, but um, it's a very good bit of defence by air, but. Yeah, There's not much deception in the Harris line out. I think they don't look committed to their dummies, and I think at this level, you need to, when teams are doing a lot of work on defensive line outs because it's such a massive, massive part of the game. I think the majority of possession comes from line out um, so teams do a lot of work on, on defending them and um, there's been there's not been much deception in the Hertz line out they look a bit slow in their movements and they're not, not really committing to it so um, it's easy for people to say oh the, the throws off the throws off but it's about the collar and, and the commitment to the drill as well so I think um, probably a couple of throws have been a bit awry from Cami but he can't get, take all the blame and um, I think Harris needs to look a little bit more of their line-out and how they're, and they're trying to get through a bit quicker, I think. Yeah, two more changes for Harriet. Jack McLean sadly being forced off injured. He's a big, big player for the Golden Acre men. He's replaced by Lewis Govanlock, the Scotland Students International. And Jed Gelderbloom, the teenage scrum half, is on for Alex Ball. And his first job will be to feed the ball into this home scrum. Excited to see Jed go. He's been in with Edinburgh quite a lot. Uh, a young guy with... Bind. I've heard he's got a bit of talent, so looking forward Set. to see if he can ignite something for Harris. Yeah, he just caught a glimpse of Gavin Wilson coming off there as well. And Ryan Sweeney is the man who's been replaced after another mighty shift in the back row. Bind long, beat close. Still no score in the second half. 18 0 it remains. We're into the final quarter. The Bulls won't be too dismayed at that. It's been mostly Harris, I'd say. The, the ball's been mostly in the air's half, and Harris have been the ones applying pressure, just haven't taken any opportunities yet. Can they make one count at last? Edwards! Oh, it was telegraphed, Davidson almost pinched him. As it is, Cooper bursting clear on the far side. No seven. Houston, Edwards again. Thinks about the cross kick, it's another really risky one. And Williams this time can't take it. No advantage. Tell you what, I've received a couple of those floaty passes off Edo in my time at Harriet. <laughs> he loves them. Yeah. There's a genuine attempt to catch over a scrum white ball. ARC here. Yeah, it's not a deliberate knock on. Matt Davidson. You can see the exasperated look as he let that one just go through his hands, but he went for it with two hands, which is what the referees look for. I think because it was in the air that long, couldn't possibly have been looking to slap it down. Lads, you get the stability, you get a contest, all right? Simple. It's much, much better. Yeah, he does have those in him, Stuart Edwards, for all the, for the, rest of the, game, please. the clever touches that he brings to the table. Yeah, they're brilliant when they come off. Um, I think it was one of those that, that won us the league back in 2015. When we went, um, it was over 80 minutes. And uh, he chucks one out wide, and we managed to get a wee break off him and, and score the winner. So, to be fair, they do come off sometimes. Yeah, high risk, high rewards. And this time it's the Bulls who win the penalty. And you can see what that means to Michael Scott, who's now propping on the loose head side. And he did a number on that Harriet's front row. And virtually for the first time in the second okay. half, Jamie, the Bulls have got some tantalising field position inside that Heriot's half. Yeah, let's see if they can get one of their set pieces to come off again. Uh, as you say, it's probably the first chance they've had to have a, a decent attack in, in Heriot's half this week. So we'll see if they come out with anything. They do have a forward at plus one, so potentially a breakout or a drive coming. But not without the ball. Wilson up there to pilfer for Heriot's. The duels have snaffled it back though. And here goes Yari Fantini. Yard after yard is gobbled up. Williams, BT have run a very smart support line. Jordan, just 
just dances beyond the tackle of Edwards. Lunak. Uh, Scott. Power from Michael Scott. He's having a good few minutes. Davidson. Lined up by Callum Marshall. That's a good hit. Spoiling from Herriots, but it's still there on the bull side. Bloodworth. Two very mobile dynamic blocks in Bulls racks. There's the other one, Tom Everard. Experienced championship campaigner. Thundering through this time with Robbie Nairn off his wing. Through the hands to Fantini. Big clear out there coming around the face of the Heriots player. Yes, Bulls allowed to play on. Williams running short and hard. Tackle release. Bruiser of a centre. Well, it was backwards from seven points. <laughs> it's unplayable. The forward points he gathered, he was in possession. A nine. Well, there's the explanation okay. from David Sutherland. Lost okay, backwards. Well, yeah, exactly. And then knocked forwards, eight and Herriots will have the Putin, and they survive that little passage of okay. attacking yeah, play from the Bulls. Seven had the ball the yeah, some good day in there from uh, Herriots, but again, 16. here looking dangerous with ball 16. in hand. Um, I, I mentioned it earlier on in the in the game, I think Herriots are getting caught a bit high in defence, especially in and around the ruck. Um, I think it, it's to their strength that they can force a tackle contest on the floor. Um, I don't know if it's a tactical there to maybe try and go high and, and maybe get a choke tackle or something like that, but for me it looks like where they're leaking the most kind of yards in and around the ruck, so if they can look to get that first man low chop and force a tackle contest, that's where they've got some pay with, with guys like Jack McLean, who I know is off now, but have got guys like Cammy Fenton in there who's a very good jackler, Jason Hill is a big lump to move as well, so... Um, Forcing the tackle contest for me would be a would be a of benefit to Herriot. Right. You were in possession, your ball. Water off, please, lads. Time back on. White, unplayable. Yeah, it's been a bit of a grind for Herriot. Second half. So much possession, so little to show for it. All good. Let's go, Mike. Yeah, Mike. Let's go. Let's go, Mike. 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 Both front rows, time is off. I don't need anybody commentating. Listen, you boys sort it, or I'll sort it, okay? Get your height, get your stability, otherwise, guys, we're having a rest. Yes, sir. Time on. I believe David Sutherland is a dentist by trades. I'm not sure I'd be arguing with him if I presented him a surgery with a toothache. Crouch! 16 naughty schoolboys, duly admonished. Set! Here we go. A squeeze comes on from the rules, and it's there for Marshall. Oh, that's a loose, loose ball. And Cooper did really well to Still rescue live. the Still live, Ross. A sloppy pass from Gelder Bloom. <laughs> Just what you want when you've yeah, been on the pitch for about five minutes, your old age grade buddy James Cooper. That is the definition of hospital Good pass, point. I think. Right, I'll get him long. Not ideal. You, stay, you get your feet underneath you. <laughs> Getting one around the ankles in your own goal line. <laughs> <laughs> Not what you want. He dealt with it well. But it is just a temporary reprieve for Elliots. However, he caught it out there. Another throw is crooked. Choice. Excellent. Another scrum. You've caught it. You've caught it there. Choice scrub. Yeah, I think that uh, squint throw will herald the end of Alex McGuire's afternoon. Pete Horn and Pat MacArthur have given the shout to Jamie Drummond to have a good chunk of the second half. 
On the field, there's a blood replacement for Maguire. And he is hurriedly de-bibbing beneath us. And he has to come on in the front row shortly. Matt Minogue as well, the Australian playmaker. Set. Team University on the Gold Coast has been readied for action as well. Any relation to Kylie and Dana? I believe not. I wish it was, it'd be great for commentary. Houston, the cross-field kick through the hands of Aaron Tate. <laughs> the assistant referee is content that he two. didn't Substitution two. make contact with the ball. Air ball, yeah. Heriot's two also, substitution, Heriot's two. Yeah, so both hookers are being replaced as we see a, a none yeah. too happy Bruce Houston Pines, after being off, okay. caught just slightly late. Cheers. So Michael Linus, okay, vastly experienced Heriot Sukar, is on Time in on. place of Cami Fenton, who's put in a, okay. a typically industrious shift in the heart of that front row. Yeah, good shift from Cami, I think. A um, couple of good bits of pressure at the breakdown, a couple of good carries. Um, a decent performance in the lineup, a few unlucky ones. But, uh, no, good performance. It's like to see Chicken go. Chicken. I'm not going to ask why he's called that. <laughs> Maybe that's one for off here. Well, the chicken is with us. And here come Harriet through Young. Yeah. Through the hands of Ross Jones. Off the black shoulder. Harriet's look like they're trying and to play a little bit more, especially from their own yeah, half. Off the black um, shoulder, white ball. Yeah. Unlucky there. A good little bit of deception, but a good read off that shoulder. from uh, the airship black defense. Line. like shooting out the back and applying pressure so forcing the knock on okay oh not the knock on apologies yeah came off a rules player substitution 13 and the last of the you're on the line please hold this back replacements is being introduced and it is indeed Matt Minogue who may or may not be related to the famous Australian pop duo He's coming on and Bobby BT okay Scotland Sevens International who's back up the road from a a good strong stint yeah, at London on. Scottish. He's had a couple of nice touches today and he makes way. Yeah, quite a quiet player is Robbie, but um, always looks good on the ball. Deceptively quick. <laughs> the rules have it through Jamie Drummond. McPherson has missed out. Jordan, Williams, Minogue is lurking. Davidson puts Tate away up against Callum Young. Big strong fin from Aaron Tate. That's outstanding! He's absolutely monstered Callum Young down the touchline. And the Bulls have their third try of the afternoon and the hundredth try of the Foz Rock Super 6 season. Brilliant finish. Just the kind of in and out, big fend, great finish. Not much room to work with, but um, again, the crisp passing of air. They're always coming onto the ball and they're never being checked by the passes. Um, great execution and a brilliant finish. Yeah. Thanks, Paul. How difficult is it to finish in that position? Do you know, when you've got a player breathing down your neck. You've really got no right to get past them. Probably a bit easier if you're quicker than me, <laughs> like which I presume he is. Um, but it helps a lot. Great timing on the pass from Matt Davidson. All the passes before that have been out in front. There's a massive overlap, and. The, when a defender's coming across like that at pace yeah, like it's hard to get your feet right he probably thought he was going to step inside so he slowed down a bit and when he started out and then got the good fend away he's probably gone a bit high but an outstanding finish a, a very very hard thing to do so he's done well Matt Minogue from wide on the right oh he's desperately unlucky just glancing the upright it remains 23-0, but Air Shabul's crucially one try away from the bonus point score. This is another look, Jamie, at this wonderful finish from Tate down the touchline. I know I've said it quite a lot, but all their passes are out in front, and what a difference that makes to your attack. Uh, they're holding a slight bit of depth, they're all coming on short, and it, and it looks to me like it's something they'd spend quite a lot of time on in training. And I'm sure the coach will be chuffed to see that it's coming out in games. More changes to tell you about as well. Josh Scott is off for Heriot's to be replaced by Nicky Jones. 
Big long ball from Tom Jordan and Robbie Nairn is gone. Look at the pace of the big fella. Robbie Nairn scuffling defenders left and right. Can anybody stop him? Hold down just short. He had the hat trick in his sights, but. 15, 15. Oh, the good play is undone by an infringement. Great turnover, last ditch attempt. Uh, Jackal there from, from fullback Ross Jones, an outstanding bit of defensive work, but what a break from Robbie. Absolutely ghosting past James Cooper. Houston just punts Herrick a little further out of the danger zone. This is the break here from Robbie Nair. He's deceptively fast for a man of his size, Jamie. Yeah. Um, he would, believe it or not, his athletics event was the shot putt. I have that in my commentary notes. It's a, a wee nugget for you, but um, he's always been rapid and has never looked that quick. But has always, always been rapid and such a big man at pace. Um, so, a great attribute to have. Such a weapon, Robbie Nair. It's not very nice. not beyond him yet. <laughs> I mean that in the nicest possible sense. A weapon of mass destruction on the rugby field, at least. Oh, it's loose from Edwards. And Williams could be in for the bonus. He's left the ball behind. And it's taken back over the Heriot's line by young Cooper. Went for yeah. the one-handed pickup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he had yeah. support on hand as well. He could have popped it off. Four from twelve on the floor. Scrum, white ball. It's been ruled as a knock-on by Williams. There's the scoop. For the swap, bro. Ross, good swap. Should he be stepping over that and just? <laughs> it's a hard one. Hands? It's a hard one. As we know, the the rugby ball never bounces to how you expect it. It's a cliche. But um, again, it's just skill execution. I think the pass went behind uh, Robert Kay there, and they're automatically under pressure from that. Ruby Sace and Ewan Hamilton Bulger both on in that Bulls pack, and they're making their considerable presence felt. They battered that scrum, and Blair McPherson will gleefully gobble up the bonus point score. A captain's contribution, but that try belongs to the big men of the pack. Blair McPherson is sixth of the Fosrock Super Six. And that is a fantastic shaken try. Bonus point of the Fos Rock Super Six campaign for Ayrshire Bulls. Sixth try of the season for Blair McPherson. His fourth against Heriot's in two matches. And it will ensure the Bulls leave Golden Acre with maximum points. Matt Minogue again. He struck both posts now. Perhaps he'll hit the bar next time. 28-0. 28 unanswered points. Yeah, take either side. Well, Jamie, it's that time in proceedings. Time is ticking away. Who is your Fosrock player of the match? Uh, a couple of great performances today. Um, I think two honourable mentions to the wingers for the both wingers for Ayrshire Bills, Elias Cavan and Robbie Nairn. I think they've both been outstanding, but my um, Fos Rock man of the match today, or player of the match, sorry, is number 10, Tom Jordan. I think he has pulled the strings extremely well. As I've mentioned quite a lot, the, the skills from the air backs have been outstanding. I think he's been at the heart of that through decision making, and they've been absolutely relentless with their execution and taking of opportunities. So my man of the match is Tom Jordan. Harriet's trying to finish with a flourish. Just two minutes remaining. They've coughed it up and Ruri Sace splashes on it. But another penalty.
Entry. Okay, back we go. Eight, side entry. Yeah, there you are, thank you at the front. Your turnover is legal, the hooker hadn't rolled. And then second one was entry. On the line, please, Pen. There it's go to the tail. Ball! It's a good take from Leishman. Do not change balls count. Can they at long last get one over Away, on this mighty rules pack? No, seven! I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. That's better from the home side. It's more dynamic, but the ball has been isolated. It's miles off the ground, and there's only going to be one outcome here. Brilliant defence from the Bulls again. And Heddy is thwarted for the umpteenth time. Great bit of defence again from Air. They had never looked like scoring really, apart from a couple opportunities, but always the last ditch defence from here has, uh, has come through and all credit to them. They've, at the moment, they look like they've nilled Herriot. Well, Jimmy, there is your Foz Rock player of the match, Tom Jordan, looking a little worse for wear after his afternoon's exertions. How impressed have you been with that man today? Yeah, really impressed. I think some really good kicks under pressure, um, controlling the territory game really well and... As I said, Air have been uh, absolutely relentless by taking their opportunities, and he's been at the heart of that. Their their skill execution has been outstanding, and um, they've taken all their opportunities. So uh, a great all-round performance from the ten. Well, time is up. This will be the final play in the final match of round seven of the Foz Rock Super Six. Time, Graham. Oh, yeah. Last play. Let's go. Fucking finish on a pen. Hey, let's let's get it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Go both sides. Don't step round. You take yeah. the hat. Let's go. 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 let Set. Use a reset. Out it comes for the Bulls. The knack is there. And they're just going to scramble themselves into touch and bring this capital encounter to a close. It's been emphatic. It's been full of panache and power from the Ayrshire Bulls. And they've done another serious number on Heriot's to catapult themselves back into second place in the Foz Rock Super 6. They will leapfrog Watsonians on to 22 points and within three of league-leading Southern Kings with their four-try victory. Robbie Nairn's first half double got them off and running. A wonderful finish from Aaron Tate after the interval and Blair McPherson icing a very fat, very tasty cake for Pat MacArthur and his team with a bonus point try in the final 10 minutes. Harriet scoreless, pointless, still in fifth place. They have been beaten here by the Ayrshire Bulls by 28 points to nil. And Jamie, let's take a look at some of the best of the action here at Golden Acre in Edinburgh. This is the first try from Robbie Nairn and it was a very well worked one too. Elias Caven just piercing the line. Yeah, good skill execution again. Unlucky not to score it himself, but they kept the ball alive and you're not stopping Robbie Nairn from there. A great afternoon for him. Yeah, you certainly aren't going to stop Robbie Nairn from there. Caven perhaps just forcing this offload, but he got away with it. And then Bobby Beatty just shoveling it on to Nairn. The score his third try of the Super 6 season, and he didn't have to wait long for his fourth, Jamie. Another well, well taken try. In fact, this is the yellow card to Rudy Leishman that occurred just before that. 
Yeah, Matt this Davidson was the time when they were applying ball. a lot of pressure to, to Harriet's and it was just one of those ones where you're unlucky, but a fair yellow card, I'd say. Again, this is Robbie Nairn galloping in for try number two. <laughs> and again, they, they create the space so cleverly, don't they? Yeah. Just really well worked. Um, the 10, Tom Jordan pulling the strings again, just making the right decision to go out the back and then slick hands from Bobby Beatty um, to put Robbie away in the space. Yeah, Harriets did have their moments. Rory McMichael, he loves running that short line off the inside of a mall, coming off his wing, but just forcing the return pass to Alex Ball. Yeah, I think Harriets were unlucky. They had a couple opportunities to score and it was just... Maybe some key decisions at the, made at the wrong time and um, they were unlucky not to score, but all credit to Ayers' defence, they were on top all game. Yeah, this finish here from Aaron Tate to Belter, isn't it? Yeah, outstanding, outstanding. In and out, big fend, massive diving Callum finish. Young, be disappointed not to have, have brought him down there. Yeah, he I think... Like he, he should have made that tackle. I think potentially he probably gets caught a wee bit high. Um, if he's going around the legs there, he's probably less likely to get a fend. But um, again, he's tracking across, he's having to come under, slowing down for the, the inside step, but it's probably a tackle he wants to make, as we all do, but um, an outstanding finish. Don't take anything away from that. Yeah, he spent some time playing in France. Aaron Tate, physical old stuff out there, and showing what he's learned. And again, more free-flowing rugby. This was Robbie Nair and just burning past James Cooper. We thought he was going to go the distance for a moment, Jimmy. Yeah, I mean, I've seen him do it. I've seen him do it. <laughs> so um, I wouldn't have put it past him, but a great bit of defence there from Harriet's. Um, but an outstanding break. A loopy pass that came off. They do work sometimes. And when they do, it's usually a thing of beauty. There's one that didn't. And Tom Williams should perhaps have scored there. Yeah, potentially it's a hard pick up off the toes, but um, I think they apply, they apply some pressure from here and... I think off the back of that was that when the last try came, perhaps. Yeah, there it is there. The, the battering ram, Blair McPherson. You'd have loved a, a pick and drive from there, wouldn't you? The, a um, back staring you in the face from a couple of yards out. Bang. Yeah, especially Edo. <laughs> especially Edo. <laughs> Revenge for all the hospital passes, huh? <laughs> no, definitely not. Um, but yeah, look, uh, air scrum was in the ascendancy for most of the game. There's a couple of times where, where Hertz looked dead, they got a bit of a nudge on, but... I think a bit of the slow poison coming through from air there at the end. Um, they they got the they got the best of them and a deserved try for the forwards. Yeah, as you can tell from our selection of match highlights, it's been pretty much one-way traffic here at Golden Acre. 28 unanswered points to the Ayrshire Bulls, who climb back to second in the Fos Rock Super Six. Analysis, reaction, and interviews coming next, including with the Fos Rock Player of the Match. Stay with us.
Welcome back to Golden Acre. A wonderful performance from the away side. The Bulls, 28 points to zip. Great win for them. Their first win on the road so far in the Falls Rock Super 6. And a bonus point win as well. A very fine win indeed. My goodness, what's that going to mean for the end of the season? Of course, the final is coming up in October and the Ayrshire Bulls have just taken one step closer to that as well. And I'm delighted to introduce you to our Falls Rock Player of the Match. He is, of course, a standoff Tom Jordan. Tom, Congratulations, a great performance from you, a great performance from the team. Yeah, awesome, like, thanks for the award. Um, I think for us, the forwards have laid a good foundation and just let our backs do what we want from wherever on the field, so luckily the rain stayed off a bit so we could chuck it about, but no, thank you. You guys really be sort of dominating the set piece as well, so that gave you a, a good platform as well, right? Yeah, 100%. I think we had a few errors today that we can definitely tidy up and, like always, there's work-ons to be done throughout the week, but... You know, we're happy with the scoreline and you know, we can keep building again and I think we're really coming to, into our stride, coming in the back end of the season, yeah. And also your performance as well, you were just sort of pulling the strings today as well and I, I guess it's good to get your first win away from home but also to win uh, and they didn't score at all. Yeah, it gives us good confidence going forward. I think we've been building from the start of the season, you know, we weren't quite clicking but I think, you know, we've got some great boys around me in front and behind so... You know, it makes it easy for me. So, looking forward to <laughs> it makes it easy for you. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. So, but bonus point win as well. That's that's vital because you guys, you've got a run in, a difficult run in. But um, you know, you just need to keep getting the bonus points, and you know, your place in the final potential potentially could be there. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, we just do the same things every week. Keep working on our work ons, and you know, turn up on game day, and hopefully, can put these performances out week in week out. So, just being consistent is key. So, now we're looking forward to next week and just one step closer so yeah it's good absolutely and I guess you, you just, a lot of people are looking at this and going okay you had a great performance against Stirling County last week another great performance there with the bonus point too so the momentum scenes in, uh, in your court really mm, yeah definitely I think that's where I mean a big message from us is just not being complacent you know we've had a couple of good wins you know it'd be easy for us just to slack off and think we're better than we are um, but the boys you know turn up each week and put in the work so you know, it puts us in good stead for the weekend. So now we're still working hard and pushing every week. So, yeah, it's good Absolutely. to see. Well, listen, congratulations. A fantastic performance from the whole team, but you in particular, you are the Force Rock Super 6 Player of the Match. Tom Jordan, congratulations. You're just going to get your medal now. And you can Thanks. cheer to the skies and a uh, big smile to the camera. Quite rightly, too. Great performance. A great win, oh. my goodness me. What a win for Ayrshire Bulls. And here's what happens with the, Ayrshire, the table there. Southern Knights still top of the table. Ayrshire Bulls up into second place. Watsonians, of course, were beaten earlier this weekend. Stirling County got a great win yesterday. Heriots have nothing from today at all. Bottom of your bears down at the bottom. My goodness me. It's all shaping up to be a very exciting run into the end of the season. Next week's match, Stirling County against Watsonians. Watsonians will be desperate to get a victory at Bridgehaw. And because they need to, to keep Ayrshire Bulls out of the hunt. Oh my goodness me, the Falls Rock Super 6 is really boiling up to be absolutely fantastic. Three weeks left of the regular season. Then we have the final at Edinburgh Rugby Stadium. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. What a win for Ayrshire Bulls this afternoon. There's still lots to play for. From all of us, thanks so much for your company. Bye for now.